Yikes, I'm so nervous excited to be relaunching the Cosmic Creatrix podcast season three after a year and a half or so of a hiatus when I went through a huge ego death and a complete recalibration in my leadership and my sacred business. And I'm coming back now after tons of self-care, self-work, relentless soul seeking and redeveloping my pathway of service that I can now come to you and share the nuggets of wisdom to support you with the inevitable hardships you will face on your path of self-liberation and acceleration in your feminine leadership. If you're listening to this, you are likely a mission soul that has a heart of service that wants to make an impact in the world. And in order to make an impact, we have to go through initiations to develop the maturity necessary to hold such a beautiful responsibility in this lifetime. So I want to share with you the raw, real deal shiz of what it's like to go through the inevitable leadership and business growing pains and make them your bitch. Yeah, this is not about being a victim. This is not about laying down and succumbing to the suffering. This is about taking every single painful at moment as an opportunity to radically accelerate your consciousness and to expand your capacity for greater leadership greater compassion, greater uh, attunement to the people, places, and things that you're here to serve. I hope that this is making sense. So get comfortable. I'm going to go deep into this and I'm going to share with you the lessons that I trust are going to save you from a lot of pain and save you from wanting to give up and empower you to keep staying the course. I'm probably going to be emotional. So I ask your permission to just be myself. And just to set the tone, I'm not always going to show up with makeup and hair done on my YouTube channel. I'm not always going to be politically correct. Please, I ask your permission to just let me be human and to share my version of raw humanity with you as a service, as an, an offering from the depths of my soul and my heart. Thank you for that. As some of you may know, I went from being uh, a really struggling broke single mom medicine woman working mostly underground, barely making ends meet for the bare minimum. I have three children. They're currently seven, eight, and 15. Three different dads, one passed away in 2019. So really, you know, I had no funders, no partners, no investors to bring my soul mission to life. I worked very hard for many, many years getting three college degrees, trial and aired entrepreneurship for four years. And then at the four year mark, I hit the nail on the head at the uh, start of COVID. I won't go into that whole story. That's in another episode of, you know, was reawakening the social justice warrior in me. So fast forward, I grew a seven figure business. We sold multi seven figures in digital courses, programs, retreats, which I am so humbled to say, and it feels like I'm talking about a whole different person. But what ended up happening to me is that I was very young in my experience of actually being a CEO, of actually leading people, you know, more than just my clients. I had to lead a team to uphold the operations of this beautiful structure, this business that I created. And I ate shit over and over and over again. I also, oh, let me just say a little bit about that. It, it, by way of, I was stretched too thin. I was wearing too many hats. I needed a lot of help and I didn't know how to manage the help. I had to buckle down and take courses and invest hundreds of thousands of dollars into staff and mentorship and systems and things to help me. I knew exactly how to scale a seven figure business, but I, I just didn't have stable infrastructures and I gave it a valiant effort. <laughs> I did not throw in the towel until my body gave out. Literally my body gave out and my body became my best friend. My body became my ally and I was bedridden for 45 days. Around that same time, I awakened to the fact that I was in a very emotionally abusive relationship. And I don't say that lightly. I'm not blowing that up or exaggerating that this person um, got in very big legal trouble for the harm that he imparted on me. 
And I walked away from that relationship. And that was also contributing to my body breakdown. At the same time, I had to set a boundary with a student who was making my staff cry, who was making it very uncomfortable for other students. And I had already, you know, had lots of clearing conversations that went very well with this person. We served this person with our whole heart. We made so many adjustments for her style of learning. And we just kind of hit a breaking point. And when we set that last boundary, this person wild out and became very emotionally unstable and caused harm to my business and my livelihood. They recruited about five other people to do illegal chargebacks, which means that fraudulent chargebacks for which, you know, I definitely could sue them for. And what happens when that occurs is very difficult to fight. And trust me, I fought is with as much as I could with very little extra resources. What that means is tens of thousands of dollars were ripped away from my bank account at a time that I desperately needed it um, to survive and to keep my business afloat while I was sick. I trusted this, all that that was happening. The truth about leadership is the more people you serve, the brighter you shine, the more visible you are, the bigger game you play, the likelihood of one to 5% of people not liking you and being jealous and wanting to tear you down is true. It's true. And it's probably going to happen to you in some form or fashion. And we need to be prepared emotionally, spiritually, structurally, and have a community around us. And if there is anybody to trust themselves, that they are self-reflecting, that they are being self-responsible for their shadow, it is I. I have been doing shadow work since I was 13 years old. I don't even live in a paradigm outside of self-responsibility. So I I took this as an opportunity to look deep inside. Have I done anything wrong here? Is there anything that I can course correct? Is there anything I need to apologize for and amend? I searched and I searched and I searched. And the only thing that I could find was that I needed a break. I needed to allow this process to pulverize whoever I was as a seven-figure single mom relentless warrior building this huge business that started to get ahead of herself. I needed to die to that version of myself and allow the spirit of the medicine that I work with and the spirit of the healing work that I do to make me new, to recalibrate my value system because where I'm going requires impeccable self-care, impeccable boundaries with who can have my time and who has access to the sacred teachings that I have to share. I needed to value myself and what I'm offering even higher. I needed thicker skin and I needed a grounded grace and humility, a lot more humility, tons more humility. And so for about 18 months, I allowed that process of undoing to happen to me. I allowed And it was very, very difficult. There was a period of time, about two months, that I didn't know who I was. I thought I maybe needed to go to the mental hospital. I thought, oh no, am I going to have a nervous breakdown like my mom did? And luckily, I had a support team. I had a wonderful Japanese acupuncturist. Thank you so much, Rachel, who knew exactly what I was going through. And it was a true ego death, a non-medicine-induced ego death, an apathy. And I had to allow this lack of inspiration to take manifest in my everyday life. I had to allow people to cook for me and to massage me and to help me take care of my kids and bring me water. I had to let go of the strive for massive amounts of money and keeping my status and proving I could do it. I had to let all of that fall to the ground. I even had to be willing to almost lose my house. That was a miracle for someone like me, indigenous, Mexican-American, single mom off of, well, you know, just got off of welfare not that long ago to buy a house in one of the most nice places in California. I almost lost it. I was this close. I had the foreclosure letter in the mail. I had to allow and I had to trust and I had to let myself be recreated new. And so as spirit would have it, my value system restructured. And finally, by holding the faith and allowing this natural maturation process and daring to believe that this was happening for me as an answer to my deep prayers, 
my big prayers. That belief and that faith carried me through to gather the first nugget that spirit would throw at me, the first breadcrumb. And then I found a second breadcrumb. And then I put those two breadcrumbs together and it made my first step out of that dark tunnel. I trusted the intuitions that came to me. I trusted what I didn't feel called to do. I decided to stop identifying as a business coach that that was complete. I'll still teach business one-on-one -on -one or to my priestess students or to anybody who really, really needs it, but I will no longer be identifying as a business coach that was really kind of a cop-out and a way for me to supplement my income, which I think is holy and righteous, but I'm a medicine woman. I'm an artist, I'm a performer, I'm a healer. And so to get to take off one of those hats was a huge relief. I had to understand that failure <laughs> is inevitable. Failure equals mastery. And that by me failing so many times and me getting knocked down and being publicly humiliated and want to give up, want to give up so bad and not is what makes me closer and closer to stabilizing long-term generous wealth, meaning wealth that wealth and success that I can share. And by wealth, I don't just mean money. I mean resources, opportunities, platform, visibility. I have a microphone. I have a platform that people listen to me, whereas some of my darker skinned brothers and sisters, even literal cousins, will not be heard entrusted in the same way that I am simply by the color of my skin and the reputation that I have built for myself. And that is a privilege that I honor that I cannot punk out on. Very emotional about this topic. I hope that you're following me. I would love to hear reviews on this podcast of how you receive this and how this has touched you. That would mean a lot to me. I had to unlearn codependency with my clients, with other people, with lovers. Code, unlearning codependency 101 means accepting not everybody gonna like you. No matter how holy, how, how sincere, how honest you are, how, how, how happily you support people, how truly effective your work is, some amount of people just aren't gonna like you. And that comes with the territory. So if you are on a path of leadership, you better buck up and accept that and stay close to the people who know you, who see you, who really know you, who know your children's names, who know what time you go to bed at night, who know how diligent and dedicated you are to your self-practice and your education, who know the sincerity of your heart. Stay close to those ones because it's inevitable. Ain't not, not everybody gonna like you and you're not gonna like everybody. Another lesson is that doing our self-work along this process, like it doesn't even matter if you can't lift a goddamn finger, you can lay in bed and do your self-work. You can write, you can release fears, you can ask for help. And all of this is going to make you a better leader, have a deeper capacity to hold others with compassion and grace. What this dark night of the soul in your business and leadership manifest is you becoming much more rooted. Your roots start connecting to your ancestors and to your true community and to your true awakened perception of your value, your inherent value and the value that you co-create with your waking reality. Those roots grow so deep so that you become stable like an oak tree that with, can withstand the next winds much better, much better. And then the courage that this takes is to trust the process, even when it looks like there's no way out. When you don't have one ounce of inspiration or one speck of desire to move forward, trust right there. Can I trust my creator and the benevolence of the universe right here, right now, when all I see is black, when I'm in a dark tunnel? Can I love myself right here, right now, when I feel like I am unlovable and that I've lost everything? Faith means you trust in something you cannot yet see. 
successful people are batshit crazy about what's possible because they can't see it with their eyes, just like the people who finally flew a plane. I call this blind heart mapping. We learned that even if we can't see nothing, can't see anything, we barely have any hope. There's a feeling in our heart that provides inspiration. One little, one little nugget of wisdom, one little piece of intuition, one little piece of, of flowing energy, and you grab that and you follow that one tiny, tiny speck of hope. Like your life depends on it. Trusting that another fucking speck of hope is going to show up after that. I'm so emotional about this. I'm so glad that you're letting me share this with you. Such good integration. And you grab that one piece that would turn the feeling in your heart. Remember, you can't see it in your waking reality, but you feel it in your heart. You grab that one piece of hope, that one piece of breadcrumb, and you wait. You fucking wait until the next piece appears and you trust that that next piece is coming. It might come tomorrow. It might come in nine months. It might not come for two years, but you wait for that next piece. And then you put that next piece together and the next one, and then it starts to build momentum. And then when creator believes, when, when the universe trusts that you are ready to receive the rest of the recipe or the rest of the path, the rest of the map, the rest of the instructions, they will present themselves and you will be amazed at how trustworthy this heart mapping is, this, this guidance of your heart is. It will never fail you. It will never fail you, even in the darkest of nights. So I leave you with that, to trust your process. Know that on the path of leadership, excellence, success, visibility, you are going to go through initiations. It's inevitable. And it, the harder it is, the more special you can feel because the universe has seen that you are capable of doing great works. And so therefore you need greater lessons, greater development, greater initiations. So own that, hold it with honor that your face was planted in the ground because when you rise, you are going to be given a lot. And it's going to be holy and it's going to be beautiful. And you're going to be a source of generosity for the world. Omateo. Oh,